All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eric Garver. I am the current Firewall D maintainer. Um, this talk is about Firewall D and what's been going on for about the past 18 months. Um, it also covers some uh, future plans and potential features. So um, I'm going to discuss a lot of features, and I hope this doesn't make the DEF CON people mad, but I'm OK with, since we're going to discuss a lot of the features, if you have a simple question in the middle, I'm okay with it, but otherwise, if it's a long question, complex question, please wait till the end. Okay. All right, so a quick information here about Firewall D, if, just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, Firewall D is a zone-based firewall abstraction for uh, NF tables and IP tables. Um, provides some primitives like services and ports, and also adds some uh, um, more network level things like port forwarding and masquerading. Um, it also contains a simple language for custom rules for more advanced use cases. Um, there are two main interfaces, a CLI and a GTK GUI. Um, it also has a DBUS interface for a uh, more programmatic interface. And uh, interestingly enough, both user interfaces use the DBUS interface. So. Um, it is the default firewall for RHEL, Fedora, and SUSE. And it's in, available in many, many other distributions. So as I said, a very busy 18 months. Um, here's some random statistics I pulled. Most of these come from uh, the Git, Git log. Um, so over 18 months, we've had 40 unique contributors upstream. Um, a lot of those, uh, yeah, so these are actual pull requests upstream. Um, interestingly enough, 17 of these are repeat contributors, which I thought was really cool. Um, so some diff set there if you're really interested. Um, a bunch of 65 pull requests and a bunch 89 plus issues have been closed in that 18 months. So, and lots and lots of new service definitions. So that's things like uh, your one line command to add MDNS, SSH. So a lot of, a lot of new services. All right, so the main reason we're here is to talk about features. So 18 months, all these, it, these are the probably more notable things that have been added in 18 months. Um, all of these will be in 0 0.7, which will be released someday. I'm not sure when. <laughs> um, but they'll also be in RHEL 8 and uh, Fedora 31. Um, these first two are very large features. Uh, they have their own slides, so I'll only briefly mention them right now. Uh, those are NF tables backend and ritual priorities. Um, so I'm actually going to jump down to the third bullet. Um, so there was quite a bit of improvements with uh, network manager integ integration. Um, arguably, these could be called bug fixes, but they're significant enough I had them here. Um, they were um, some scenarios or certain, so for example, interaction with Docker. Uh, you know, if you add a Docker interface, sometimes you could restart Firewall D and it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, be re-added to the zone properly. So features, bugs like that have been improved. Um, next bullet here is a, a 64 address filtering. So this is a feature that actu actually existed in network scripts. Um, it had been there for at least a decade. Um, and as you may have heard through other talks, network scripts are kind of on the out right now. Um, so this was a feature we decided it would be nice to have in Firewall D. So this has been added. This is basically um, a specific set of IPv6 address, destination addresses that um, will be filtered. Um, next bullet point is the uh, CLI command or CLI option check config. Um, this is basically config validation. Um, in the past, users have done manual changes to XML configuration and they restart Firewall D and find out it's not valid. Um, all in all, that's not a bad thing, but the bad thing was that's hard to figure out. Basically, they had to go dig through logs to find that. So one feature that was added is a check config option. So basically, you can make all your changes, do a firewall config, check config, and find out not only XML schema issues, but some semantic changes, like you're trying to use a service that just simply doesn't exist. So like if you were to, a good use case for this is like if you had a, uh, config that used on one box or in a different version of Firewall D. You can bring that over, run a check config, make sure it validates against a different version. 
And the last line here is uh, um, a new global config called flush all on reload. Um, this mostly affects users of direct rules and people that like to do runtime only changes for <coughs> interface, binding, interface to zone bindings. Um, there was actually a mostly undocumented behavior where uh, direct rules, runtime direct rules, and uh, interface bindings would actually be retained on a reload. So there, a lot of times that would surprise users. So basically, if you can't fix it, feature it. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the new behavior is everything flushes, as you, most people, many people would expect. So all those direct rules, interface bindings that are runtime only will fully flush. But if you like the old behavior, you can change this to no and get it back. So moving on to the big ones here. Let's talk about the NF tables back end. So this went into the 0 0.6 release, which is a little over six months old, maybe eight months old. Um, the, big act, the big question is, is why? Um, there are many reasons. Um, I highlighted some here. Um, a big benefit is we can do combined processing for both IPv4 and IPv6. Um, I don't know how familiar everybody is with the back end, but um, previously you would have to add, like if you were to enable allow SSH through, you would have to add that for, it would, there would be an entry for IPv4 and IPv6, both IP tables and IP6 tables. Um, with NF tables, we can handle both in the same rule. All right, another reason is NF tables has built-in sets, um, so don't need IP set. And yeah, we can use the NFT binary to um, manage all our rules, all our sets, IPv6 and IPv4 um, with a single interface. We don't have to deal with multiple tools. Um, another nice thing about NF tables is with IP tables, there was basically um, global, global tables and it didn't interact well or didn't cooperate well with multiple users. So like if there's firewall D and somebody else trying to use IP tables, a lot of times how you dealt with that is you flush and apply everything. Um, with the NF tables back end, um, NF tables actually has, what NF tables calls tables is more like a namespace. So we can actually create a firewall D table and not touch any other, other rules that exist in other tables. So like when firewall D um, comes up, it doesn't care if there's other rules there. So it's, you can, in essence, what this allows is you can use firewall D in combination you can use your own custom table and firewall D won't touch it. Okay. Um, so when it does come to upgrade for you, anybody users, um, this upgrade should be seamless. This, what I mean by this is we still support all the features pre and of table support. That includes all the, all the primitives, all direct rules. Direct rules are still supported, so you can still have use your end of tables back end mm -hmm. with your IPv4 direct rules. So last line, again, <laughs> don't panic. IP tables back end is still supported, fully supported upstream. Um, if you want to use it, it's still there. Just got to change it. Thank you. Um, if you would like to know more information about this, I do post regular blogs for major features. So there's a link here at the bottom. There's more specifics in there if you really want to get into the details or have further questions or email me. That's fine. Or IRC. And it, all right. So anybody have any quick question there? It's a stop point. Okay. All right. Next major feature would be ritual priorities. So as I mentioned at the start, uh, FireWorldy has custom, a custom syntax for rules for more advanced users. Um, that's what we call rich rules. Um, in, the, in the past, based on what type of rule you had, if the, tra the, the rule was allowing traffic or denying traffic, it would automatically be sorted into a um, <coughs> position in the rule set. Basically, an allow, allow, it would, 
yeah, it'd be, it would, you had no control of where the rule got placed in part, within the Firewall rule set. So that's what this feature is all about, is adding a priority field, allowing the user to arbitrarily order these custom rules. And then one consequence is that is it allows you to freely mix your log rules, your deny rules, and your accept rules. Previously, those were sorted by firewall D. You had no control over which order those were run in. Um, this also allows you to place rituals before and after firewall D's other primitives. So in the past, like if you were to add a service and a ritual that allowed, allowed certain traffic, those were treated equally. It's basically, whichever one got added first, that's when that's gonna get executed first. With priorities, we can actually control that order. And of course, we're backwards compatible. If you don't specify priority, it's, you still get the old behavior. Um, this feature also has its own blog post. Um, it goes into more, yeah, more low-level details, what it looks like, actually looks like in NF tables. So if you're curious, please go look at it. So here's some examples of that. These are fairly small ones because it's hard to fit on a slide. <laughs> but here's the syntax. So you'll see this is what's all been added. And this is, again, the ritual syntax. And it's basically just another field, like how, how you would specify the family. Um, in this first example, um, it's basically a catch-all rule that you would, in, basically right before the policy would have happened, um, it's, it, it's, you would put this there if you were to, wanted to catch unexpected traffic. Basically, you want to see anything that comes through um, that wasn't caught by any of your services you're allowing. So it's a way to just kind of flag unexpected traffic. On the second example, you can, it's allowing, allowing the service for a specific range of IP addresses, and then for everybody else, we're going to log and reject it. So allow somebody, but scream loudly for everyone else. So there was a handful of features that were not necessarily user-facing, but I think they're important to highlight. Um, the biggest one, and I put this on this slide because it's not user facing but heavily benefits user, is there was a lot, lot, of, lot of work rewriting the test suite um, and adding lots and lots and lots of new tests. As you can see, um, the third bullet says we went from six test groups to well over 120. Um, also as part of this effort, we added um, CI for every commit, every pull request, so that, that's Travis CI up on GitHub. So every time you, uh, every time somebody makes a PR, I'll, we'll know how good it is. Um, this last bullet here is source code checking. That again runs part of CI. Um, so if anybody wants to flick, fix Flake 8 source code, contact me after this talk. Um, this, for this, uh, this set of work, there was another, also another blog post talking about the test suite. Um, this is useful for anybody that wants to contribute or, con or just curious about how to use the test suite. Um, but this is also useful for anybody that's interested in packaging and wants to run this as part of uh, your packaging. Um, it's also useful for anybody that works on other, uh, um, other projects that use auto tools. So it's a fairly useful in general. So let's talk about some future features. Um, again, these are possible future features. I'll emphasize that. Um, a big one, so the first one I have listed here is policy objects. Um, this is a concept that I've been thinking about for a while that would allow you to place a policy. All right, let me back up for a minute. So right now, Firewall D attaches uh, rules to a zone, right? This will allow you to attach 
rules to a policy that exists between two zones. So it's more about when a traffic flows from zone A to zone B, apply a policy there. And the reason that's interesting is because it allows us to implement features that have been lacking and requested for a long time, namely the output and forward filtering. Um, the second, second one I have listed here is uh, libNF tables. So right now the NF tables backend for firewall D is simply calling out to the NFT binary. Um, recently, Upstream got a brand new library called NF, libNF tables. Um, you, us, Firewall D using that would allow us to do a lot of big batch updates and have a more structured interface to NF tables. Um, third item here is uh, DOS protection. Um, I call it DOS protection, but really it's this rate limiting. You can, the idea would be to rate limit connections per second or rate limit date bandwidth data coming through. Um, again, exposing that via rituals means you could rate limit a certain user, you could rate limit a certain service, anything of the sort. Um, this fourth one here, rituals inside of service definition. Um, this is actually one of those other fairly frequently requested items. Um, so right now services can have ports, you can have um, all kinds of things, but one thing they can't have inside of them is a ritual. So adding a ritual um, would allow you to do some other interesting things. Like, so we could also, we could, you, you could almost implement like major features via a service definition. So like for earlier I mentioned the, uh, uh, the six to four filtering. If we had this rules, rituals inside of a service session, we can implement that entire feature simply by adding rituals to a service definition. And that's, so it, it'd be very flexible. Users could just, yeah, it'd be a way for users to add a lot of arbitrary features like that. So it's kind of building on the, the basics and adding very, very powerful features. Um, so I listed a couple crazy ideas. Uh, one of the things on the previous slide was we did a lot of, a lot of work uh, refactoring to enable separate backends um, to add an NF table support. As a consequence of that, that means we can support new backends fairly easily. So if there ever comes time where eBPF and XCP make sense for Firewall D, we're, we're ready for it. So. All right, lastly, that's, uh, if you, anybody's interested in contributing, um, the code's all on GitHub, it's written in Python. It's very easy to get involved, whether you're adding services, reporting issues and translations are a big one. Please, if anybody speaks uh, a non, or any language, a, that's where we get all our translations, so it's beneficial to all the users. Translations are very appreciated. Um, and as far as community, there's uh, the channel on Freenode. I'm always there, but due to time zones, I may not always reply right away, so. But the users there are actually very friendly and very Hopeful for they. I've been surprised how many users help each other. And news and blog. Um, every every new feature gets a blog. Every release gets a blog. So please check it, read it. That's the best way to be informed about new things. And with that, and stop for questions. Yes, on the. So the question is, is I, I mentioned uh, track rate limiting as a possible feature feature. He's asking about shaping, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the answer is I haven't thought about it. File a feature request. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Right there. Regarding uh, the interactive what? Okay, so I think 
think you're asking for like a, uh, I think they call it little snitch or that's one of those features. It's basically, so the question is, is uh, I, I think the question is, is there any plan to uh, add output so sniffing? Make, uh, the, the Okay. Um, all right. So the question is, is there any goal or any plan to support dynamically detecting new traffic and then allowing it, prompting the user to allow it? Okay. Um, no. There's a. It's been requested to add something similar like that to the output side, meaning if there's some program that's sending traffic that we haven't expected, and I, I, the term they used was little snitch. So I, I'm not familiar with that software, but. Um, it's been requested. Um, it'd be nice to see, but yeah, <laughs> it'd be a cool feature. I will, I will say. Any other questions? We got a few minutes, Dan. Yeah. So in one of the first slides, you had like eight thousand lines added and eleven thousand some removed in the last seventeen or eighteen months. You notice that? Added a couple of cool new features. So uh, what got removed? <laughs> so the question is, is this diff stat, about the diff stats here. Um, so these ones, how we added a bunch of features but ended up with less lines of code. Um, you're right. Uh, a lot of that had to do with the code refactoring. Um, there was quite a bit of redundant code removed, but then we also removed a alternative CLI that was basically unknown and not used much. Um, so that, 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 that removing that CLI was probably 6,000 of that. So. Less maintenance. <laughs> I think we got time for like one or two more. Anybody? All right. I guess we're good. Thanks, everybody.